Hello everybody, in this first Emancipation of Expressionism flip learning video, we are going to learn about section one, Genesis. And we are going to look at the choreographic content and the production features within this first section. It is so important that before you start, you understand um, what choreographic content encompasses. So just as a recap, you could look at movement content, structuring devices and form. So for example, looking at the different transitions within a piece and understanding where a section fits into an episodic structure. And you can also look at the choreographic devices. And it's really important that you know what features of production include. So just again, as a recap, this can include the staging and set, the lighting, props you don't need to worry about props for this work because there are no props in e of e costume the use of dancers oral setting and dance for camera but again you do not need to worry about dance for camera because e of e was created as a stage performance so the first thing you need to do is to go to the Section C Anthology Frog site and go to the Emancipation of Expressionism tab and please watch Section 1 Genesis. So this is from the second it starts until 2 minutes 18. Please think about the choreographic content while you're watching it and also start to think about the different production features. You can make a little note of any ideas that you have, either of descriptions or contribution points points and as well just make sure that you familiarize yourself with the fact file of E of E and if you need to as well just looking over the choreographer's interview just to give you some more ideas before we get started. The resources you will need are your E of E booklet that you are going to um, fill in whilst you're doing this work and it also might help you to have your C2 revision guide as well to help because there are some extra points in there that you could add to your work. Let's now have a look at choreographic content. Before we move on, just have a think to yourself, what three things does this include? Okay, so let's start by looking at the movement content in section one. So movement content includes actions, space, dynamics and relationships. You could use a little acronym, RADS, for example, to remember this. I really encourage you to come up with your own action, space, dynamics and relationships when you're watching this, um, because you're not necessarily going to remember the ones that I've picked out. But here are some examples for you. OK, so starting with actions, the female dancer uses direct arm gestures, arm rolls and poses. This contributes to the style of whacking technique, as these are specific actions seen in that style. The dancers start on the floor, they shudder and convulse and they use different contractions. So this contributes to the idea of um, an emotional journey. And Kenrick also says that this is the womb of expression um, because it's as if the dancers are being born at this moment, um, which is in line with the section being called Genesis. And this is the first time that the ninja walk motif is seen. So these are actions including running on the spot with the arms driving in opposition and the body maintains a low centre of gravity. And this contributes to the choreographic approach, which is the use of boy blue signature movement and motifs. OK, so those are some of the actions and how they contribute to the overall piece. Let's now have a look at the dynamics. So how the movement is done. The female dancer uses strong, sharp stops. This complements the oral setting as um, it's in time with the snare drum sound. So if you had an oral setting question, you could also say that this complements the movement content, for example. So you can see how you can always flip your contributions around, depending on what the question is asking you. The ninja walk and freestyle solos use a strong and powerful dynamic as well in this opening section. This contributes to the style of dances such as popping and locking, whacking, crumping, and also complements the oral setting. So the key dynamics in this um, complement the different styles that are seen, the different street dance styles. 
looking at spatial content, we need to be specific in the examples that we pick out. So the dancers start in a low sitting position whilst the female is standing on a high level. This could contribute to the choreographic intention of order and chaos because she appears as a godlike figure controlling the dancers. The ninja walk changes direction every four counts as the dancers take it in turn to freestyle. It starts downstage, then stage left, downstage, stage right, upstage, stage left and downstage. So I've been really specific with how I'm describing the spatial content in particular direction. And I thought this could contribute to the choreographic intention of order and chaos because at this moment it's really ordered um, almost army like the way they turn and looking at different relationships I've picked out action and reaction so gestures of the female dancer trigger movement from the ensemble around when she points at them and again contributing to the idea of order and chaos and the ninja walk starts in a tight square shaped formation. So formation is the relationship I'm picking out here. And this contributes to the idea of a Rubik's cube and the mechanics of one. Kenrick talks about that in his interview about how he wanted to recreate this idea of the Rubik's cube. Please go back to the section, have a look to see um, the examples that I've picked out and also pick out some of your own and fill in that section of your booklet, please. And moving on to structuring devices and form. So it's important to always remember that um, this is this piece is an episodic structure and this is section one. So episodic means that it doesn't follow a narrative storyline, but instead there's different sections with an overarching theme. So our overarching theme is this idea of an emotional journey or order and chaos and each section is um, part of that emotional journey. So this first section is all about genesis um, and birth, okay? Um, there's also a logical sequence um, within the work, and this section builds in intensity. So I thought that this definitely um, contributes to our understanding as an emotional journey. They start off... Um, on the on the floor and it builds up and gets more and more intense and it leads us on to the next section growth and struggle so you could also get asked about choreographic devices so in this section there are lots of choreographic devices three examples that i've picked out are motif and development so the ninja walk is developed to use in spatial content in particular direction and this could add to the idea of this emotional journey developing the dancers use um, unison within the ninja walk, which could add to the idea of order. And manipulation of number is also used because solos are used effectively within the first section with the key dancers being highlighted, um, showcasing their specific styles, um, which allows the audience to see these authentic dance styles. Let's now have a look at production features. Oral setting. So this is what you can hear when you watch the work. So a few examples that I've given are that there's a powerful rhythmic, um, there are powerful rhythmic drum beats, sorry, which are repeated with pauses and added sound effects. So you can hear things like fizzing sparks of electricity or possibly scratching. And this is a high impact introduction which aims to surprise and capture the attention of the audience. At some parts within this first section, the drum beat completely stops, making the atmospheric sound effects more prominent, which adds contrast, contrast and variety to the piece. And at one point, there is a collection of three quick kick drum beats, followed by a snare drum beat. So I'm picking out the specific instruments that I can hear, which create more intensity. Now, please have a look at the section again and listen to um, what oral setting affects you hear. Let's have a look at the use of dancers. So a small group of dancers begin on stage, which um, shows this idea of the start of life. And then the amount of dancers builds up as the section progresses, which allows the section to build in intensity, um, which it does with other production features as well, such as the oral setting, such as the lighting. Um, 
gender is not divided through the costume as all the dancers wear the exact um, same costume which shows the idea of order. In terms of the set design we don't have any set. It's a proscenium arch stage and the set is completely bare. This allows the audience to fully focus on the movement. It also allows large groups of dancers to be able to execute lots of different formation changes safely and it allows for different lighting shapes to be fully visible on the floor. Lighting. So the piece starts with cool blue lighting in the form of several spotlights which are directed towards the dancers. We've spoken about this before, but a contribution to this could be that it makes them look blue with their arms and face appearing pale and cold, which could link to the idea of birth. There are also shadows created as the dancers move, creating a nice effect for the audience. Then all the lightings move to focus centre stage and there's a deep blue lighting. This creates an impact as the dancers appear shiny and metallic. There are a combination of spotlights and blackouts throughout the, the section which draws attention to specific dancers. Now please think of some more lighting descriptions and contributions. And finally, let's have a look at the costume. So there's a little picture of the costume there. You can see that it's a casual, minimalist and clean look which does not take any attention away from the movement. It's a short-sleeved, loose-fitting, pale blue t-shirt, everyday blue denim jeans, high-top grey trainers with a white sole. This contributes um, and complements the style of street dance. They're all dressed the same, which presents an image of unity and equality, so there's no gender divide. The blue complements the light and design and is a trademark colour for the company. Um, the unisex idea obviously supports the choreographic intention of order and long hair is tied back ensuring that facial expressions are seen. What else can you add? Please now go back over section one and watch it again and see what other examples you can add. I've given you lots of my examples there, but they might not stick. So it's got to be things that you pick out when you're watching it so that you can almost close your eyes and see section one in your head. Please let me know if you have any questions. Good luck with um, analysing it in more detail.